oceanfront hotels were badly mauled by the storm, which ripped steel shutters from windows and storefronts. Glass littered the streets, damage estimated at more than two and a half million dollars. Wind-driven surf washed into the streets all along the small resorts that dot Highway A1A. The combination of wind and water left the streets along the ocean covered with sand. Cleo slapped only lightly at South Day, but gave her full and devastating attention to all of Broward County. Obviously, much boarding up was done in haste, or not at all. You see KT prior to the storm. The arrow points to a 250-foot radio tower. It's no longer standing. Cleo took her toll. The tower crashed to within less than a foot of WCKT's main studio. It belonged to WIOD, an NBC radio affiliate. The twisted mass of steel crushed several automobiles, including that of a WCKT switchboard operator who had been consoling viewers. The tower had to be cut up before nearly a score of automobiles trapped by the steel barricade could leave the island. Shortly before the eye of the storm reached WCKT, power sources at the studio failed. But hurricane and the residents there who had heard reports, our company spokesman was asked what went. He said, strong, small, but strong-willed Niagara. When I talked tonight with our Palm Beach to Dade County, had at least a few more hours to get ready. They used the time as best they could, and then they waited. The top winds recorded at West Palm were about 104 miles an hour, not quite as bad as the top gusts here. But as one Palm Beach resident said, if it gets over 100, the rain came with sledgehammer force, popping out windows, sparking transformer fires, and bringing down power lines. The difference between the scenes in West Palm and the scenes in Dade are geographical. There, as here, debris was everywhere as the wind and rain tore down signs, crossing gates, and bridge wires. The water pounded from rooftops, creating correspondent. I asked what took the sharpest beating. He said it would be unfair to be specific houses, cars, house trailers, and boats, you name it, and you've got it. Not killed or seriously injured. This smashed hulk is what remains of the opulent Roman Forum, a houseboat modeled after Cleopatra's regal barge. Cleo reduced it to a $200,000 junk pile in Indian Creek. Another boat, the famed Surfside 6, was also damaged. Miami Beach homes, particularly the older ones along Pine Tree Drive, took a beating but the heaviest damage was inflicted on hotel. Trees uprooted, screening pulled out. Aircraft at Opelika and Miami International Airports also took a battery. Many private planes were merely tied down on barren fields. This was the result. Planes at Miami International were blown across the field. At Opelika, high winds ripped one DC-3 from its berth and blew it a mile from the airport. The storm spawned some dozen fires throughout Dade County as winds ripped down power lines. A tomato packing plant in Florida City was a total loss. another blaze did a million dollars damage to a North Miami warehouse. Cleo may not have been a major disaster, but you couldn't tell it from these scenes along Collins Avenue. Following Cleo's exit, officials closed off the causeways to keep crowds of sightseers underfoot and discourage looters. From South Miami north to the Broward Line, the scenes were the same. Streets littered with fallen trees, power lines and assorted debris. Police urge people to stay at home for their own safety. Communications media did not escape Cleo's wrath. Radio station WINZ with studios atop the Biscayne Terrace Hotel in downtown Miami was completely blown apart by the tough little storm. Announcers and engineers busily broadcasting hurricane information when the wind windows blew in, had to run for their lives.
After a Clio passed, the Small Business Administration declared Dade County a disaster area. But after some local officials and Chamber of Commerce officials had a chance to assess the damage, the disaster tag was challenged. Only one dwelling was destroyed, and it was due to faulty construction. Still, President Johnson personally phoned Miami Mayor Robert King High, offering the federal government's assistance if it was needed. A week after Cleo passed through Greater Miami, there were still small areas without electricity. Vast quantities of refrigerated food spoiled and meat inspectors were kept busy, literally sniffing out contaminated supplies. The telephone company reported over a million dollars in emergency repairs. In Broward County, the story was much the same, as shown by these scenes as Birch State Park. Benches became toys for the wind. Streets bordering the beaches were clogged with sand and debris. Bulldozers worked overtime to clear them. 